guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is checking the refrigerant charge with subcooling. Okay, if you have a thermostatic expansion valve that looks like this, either in the front of your evaporator coil or inside the evaporator coil box, then you'll be checking the refrigerant charge with subcooling. All right, you first need to make sure that your temperature for 410A refrigerant is above 32 degrees. All right, after that. You can go ahead and continue checking uh, your refrigerant charge in subcooling. All right, is we're going to be checking subcooling, which is taken on the high side gauge. All right, we have our temp probe. All right, mounted on the liquid line within three inches of the service port. All right, so that's a small liquid line. We have our red gauge attached to the small liquid line. All right, and to check subcooling, what we're looking for it's the temperature decrease in liquid form. So. In the middle of this condenser coil right here, you're going to have a saturated temperature, okay? So the saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil is actually found in the pink ring, okay? Pink or light rose, that's 410A, or R410A refrigerant, all right? So we are looking at 79 degrees in the middle of the condenser coil right now, all right? So what you do is you take that minus the actual temperature found right here on the temp stat, all right, 70.5. So what you do is you just take 79 degrees, all right, so you take it from 234 into um, 79 degrees, okay, that's 234 PSIG, take it into 79 degrees, saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil, all right, minus 70.5, and you end up with 8.5 degrees of subcooling, okay? So you have 8.5 degrees of subcooling uh, as it's exiting the outdoor unit and it's heading towards the thermostatic expansion valve. All right. So most units on the rating plate, you know, right here, will specify, you know, maybe 8 or 12 degrees of subcooling, and, and I've seen as high as 17 degrees of subcooling before. Okay. Um, but that's how you do it. All right. Now. So this unit, if it's calling for 8 degrees of subcooling on the rating plate, then this system is charged properly. All right. We have a head pressure of 234, and we have a saturated temperature of 79 degrees. So that leaves us with roughly 8.5 degrees of subcooling. And if, it, if the target is 8, and we have a slightly higher than the target, then, then we are good. Okay. Anywhere within, say, 12 degrees of actual subcooling, um, down to say we'll go six degrees of subcooling. You really, you really don't want to get down below six degrees of subcooling, because what could happen is the uh, liquid refrigerant could potentially uh, pick up temperature and end up vaporizing back into a saturated state before it even gets to the uh, thermostatic expansion valve. All right. All right, so say our target subcooling here on the rating plate said 12 degrees is a target subcooling, and we only had 8.5. If we have too low of a subcooling, an actual subcooling, then we need to add refrigerant, and that will increase this pressure, it will increase this saturated temperature, and it will decrease this temperature, and it will widen the gap, okay? It's, it's the same process as uh, subcooling for R22 refrigerant, all right, you're just dealing with higher pressures and higher, actually higher pressures lead to what would still be the same saturated temperature, okay? So R22 saturated temperatures and, and R410A saturated temperatures kind of range about the same things. What you're gonna notice though is the, the more efficient the system and the, the more fins there are on the outdoor unit and the higher the sear rating, then you're gonna notice that the temperature the saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil will be lower on some of the newer, higher efficiency 410A units compared to the old R22 Freon units. All right. So um, if the actual subcooling is too low compared to the target subcooling, then you need to add refrigerant. All right, this is scenario two. And what we're looking at is a subcooling on the rating plate of 10 degrees of subcooling, okay? It's actually covered up by the multimeter, all right? On the rating plate, it will say TXV subcooling 10 degrees, all right? So what you do is we use this pressure right here, okay, on the high side, and we're looking at 230 PSIG. We bring that into 
78 degrees saturated in the middle of the condenser coil. So you got 78 degrees minus the actual temperature found on the small liquid line at 75.5. All right, so you got 78 minus 75.5, and you're left with 2.5 degrees of subcooling. All right, as well, you're going to notice that our vapor um, pressure is at 102 psig, and we follow that into a saturated temperature of just barely higher than 32 degrees. So we're right on the verge of freezing on the evaporator coil just due to not having the pressure higher. You know, the pressure is not high enough, which means the saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil is not high enough. All right, so both indicators are, are telling us that we're going to need to add refrigerant. All right, so um, once you add refrigerant, you're going to increase the pressure, which is going to increase the, the saturated temperature. Okay, and this actual temperature will lessen, it will widen the gap, and it will increase your subcooling. Okay, just say our vapor pressure was higher, say it was at like right around 40 degrees saturated temperature, and just say our um, head pressure is the same as what it is now. Okay, but if our actual temperature on the multimeter was 65 degrees, okay, if it was 65 degrees here, and our target was 10 degrees of subcooling, all right, and we had 88 here, and that would mean that we had 13 degrees of subcooling, all right? And that would actually be um, a little bit overcharged, but actually still okay, all right? Because you gotta remember, people are gonna be connecting and disconnecting gauge sets off of this system in the future, all right? So to have a, above three degrees or below three degrees um, from your actual target subcooling, that's actually okay. I prefer to be one or two degrees higher in subcooling or a larger amount of subcooling um, just to uh, make sure that when people connect and disconnect their gauge sets that they're not stealing too much refrigerant out of the system and therefore the system's not working. All right, but that's that. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.